Good morning and welcome to Church at Home with Rachel for Friday the 21st of May. It is really chilly here in Wainwright, but I understand that in Ontario it's a scorcher. So wherever you are, please dress appropriately, but make sure you wear your mask. Lately, I've been doing a lot of thinking and discerning with COVID and our bubbles and everything. Um, especially having moved here in the middle of the pandemic, Rob and I really haven't had a chance to get to know our neighbors and such. And, and so there's been a lot of quiet time, a lot of um, getting to know each other better, uh, but also getting to know ourselves, I think. And so in that discernment of really thinking, who am I? You know, I've been ordained for 22 years and living here in Alberta and really feeling like I'm home. Um, getting to know a two-point congregation um, after having had seven years in a single point. Um, people who are vastly different, like coming from two different places. Wainwright and Edgerton are completely different um, styles of living and um, both equally wonderful, but just completely different. And that's, that's a beautiful thing. But then also recognizing that I'm trying to get to know them wearing masks and not being able to see people publicly, like in groups. And, you know, it's, it's just different. So there's been a lot of time for that, that, that really that desire, the need to, to, to sort of settle in and to listen for the voice of God, to pay attention to what the Holy Spirit is saying. Um, this pandemic is, has been a pain in the patootie for a lot of reasons, but in some ways there has given us opportunities to learn things about ourselves and to develop skills we didn't know we had to really do that that vocational discernment of who is it that God calls me to be um, and part of that part of that discernment comes in having conversations with other people and and seeing yourself reflected in them um, what is it that they think of you when they look at you when they think about discernment of they they share with that you with you how they see you and who you are and your role in their life. That's a big part of discerning. Um, I've said this before, and I'll say it forever, that when you're discerning something, um, it's important that you do the interior work, that um, head and heart work of listening for the Holy Spirit, listening to what God is saying. But also it's important to listen um, without fiddling around <laughs> with what God is speaking through other people and other situation, and other circumstances. I'm reading a book about discernment by Henry Nouwen, and he talks a lot about um, the different ways we can discern. We can discern through nature, through reading, through other people. And it's important that we listen openly, that we don't impose our ideas on others. So when we listen to someone and they are speaking to us of what, what they think of us, we need to not impose upon them what we think. So as I've said before, you know, if, if you've got a young young person in your congregation and and they are discerning whether they're called to become a priest, for instance, um, that's work that they do interiorly. They, they pray, they may journal, they may read, they might study scripture. Hopefully they do all of these things. But they also will be listening for that person who comes to them unexpectedly and not with invitation to come to them and say, you know, I've been thinking about about you, and I've watched you, and I have you ever considered a call to the priesthood? If we say to somebody else, do you think I'm called to the priesthood? We put them in an awkward position, because if they've never thought of that before, they may try to be polite and say, well, yes, of course I have, because it seems like that's what you want. Um, but it also plants an idea that maybe they hadn't had before, that God hadn't given them. But when someone comes to you, or even if the question has been asked and they come to you later having had time to discern without you sort of picking at them and saying, well, have you thought about it? Have you thought about it? Um, when they come to you and say to you, you know, I discern, I believe that you are called to ministry or something. That's, that's like an echoing of that call. It's, it's an affirmation of an interior call. That, that's so important in discernment. It's so important in understanding what God is calling us to do, whether it's priesthood or teaching or motherhood or even thinking, do I take that new job that's being offered to me or that I would like to apply for? Um, do I, am I called to move, like pick up my family and move to another part of the province or the country for, 
for work or for um, education. You know, when we discern, we decide that we've that we're called to continue to to go back to university or college. All of these things require discernment, and discernment really is a communal thing, although it's done in t individually in a community. But it came to me the other day when I was talking to uh, to someone who has been important in my discernment. And he said to me that we were talking about sort of those things that we carry with us from our from our growing up years, and this idea that we have that some people, maybe not the newer generation, hope they not, but some of us old folks, um, maybe grew up in those generations of, of who do you think you are, or you don't give a child a compliment because it might swell their head. Um, children are to be seen and not heard, meaning that we grew up with a sense that we didn't have anything to contribute because we were children. But that, unfortunately, that rolls over into our adulthood. So that idea of who do you think you are to do? And I wonder if people like Wayne Gretzky or Connor McDavid had been told, who do you think you are when they strapped on their skates and said to their parents, you know, I really like to learn how to play hockey. You know, um, look at um, Brasseur and Eisler. Um, beautiful figure skaters from the 80s um, that represented Canada at the Olympics and the World World Championships. What would have happened if when they went to their parents as young children and said, you know, I really think that, that I'd like to, to try the skating thing, but not just on Saturdays with my friends at the rink, but I'd like to dedicate my life to it. What would have happened had we said to them or had people said to them, who do you think you are? You're just, you know, Isler, you're just a little boy from Seaforth, Ontario. You know, you who... You, our hometown prophet thing. Nobody, nothing good can come from Nazareth. Nothing good can come from Lindsay, Ontario, or Seaforth, or from Wainwright, or Edgerton, or Edmonton, or Niagara Falls, or Timbuktu. There's something wrong when we allow ourselves to believe that dialogue that says, who do you think you are? because we are children of God. And their first answer must be, who do you think you are? Well, I am a child of God. And God doesn't do junk. God doesn't make mistakes. God makes beautiful, miraculous, magnificent creations. So that's first of all, the answer to that question, who do you think you are, is God. So I think the first thing we need to do is change the way we ask the question. So someone comes to us and says, who do you think you are? We need to say, no, I think you mean, who do you think you are? Because that leads then to who really we are. Who does God think you are? When we raise our children or maybe, you know, our grandchildren um, with this a newer way of thinking, not worrying about swelled heads. Really? Are we so concerned that our children are going to have swelled heads? There's so much in the world that they're dealing with bullying, identity issues, self-esteem. Um, their physical self-esteem. How many children, boys and girls, have bulimia or anorexia or have low, um, self low esteem of their own body or are worried that they don't look the right way? We don't, I don't think we really have to worry that us giving children compliments is going to swell their head, make them arrogant and conceited. I think we've got a lot of work to do to back that particular truck up and park something new in there just that says... We need to raise up our children in a healthy way. We need to help them recognize that who they are is beautiful and wonderful. But we need to start with ourselves. There are lots of people out there who on the outside, when you see them in community, you know, you see them at work or at church, you, they look like they've got it all together. They are the most amazing together, you know, put together people. They you know have all the right answers. They look great, everything. But we don't know what's happening behind closed doors. We don't know what's happening inside their heart when they look at themselves in the mirror and they in the morning and say to themselves, what do I do? How can I do better for my family? Or why did I say that last night to that person? I didn't mean to hurt them. Or why did that person say that about me? What did they really mean? What did they mean when they said? I don't think there are as many people out there who have their stuff all so, so, so tight together that they always feel fantastic about themselves as we are led to believe. I think there's a lot of people in the world who really struggle with that question, who do you think you are? 
And the reality is they are children of God and we have the right to, to own the things that we are good at, to own those things that we find interest in. We have the right and we have really got the responsibility to pursue the gifts that God has started in our lives. So as we head into this long weekend and as we celebrate, you know, the coming, the soon the coming of summer and the, the coming of the end of the pandemic and the answers to prayers that we have all been praying for over a year, let's start doing some work that when we can all take off the masks and hang out together again, we have some really great answers up to the question, who do you think you are? And we will have some really fantastic good news to share because we will be able to honor who we are with authenticity, knowing that we're not being arrogant, we're not being conceited. We are simply owning the identity that God gave us when he said, you are my, my child, my beloved, and with you I am well pleased. Have a wonderful weekend, everybody. I will see you at, for church on Sunday for Pentecost, and I'll be back for um, church at home. Even though it is a long weekend, I'll do a church at home for Monday, and I'll see you then. Have a great day. Stay safe. Stay home. Hang in there. Wear your mask if you have to go out, and God bless you all.